Hello, thank you for tuning in. Today, we're putting together a 5200 series shuttle from Arc Lab Motorsport. In your shuttle hardware pack, you will find a battery tie-down strap. A 12 volt charge port, a master power switch with connectors, a 3M sticky pad, two sided tape, and all the stainless hardware to assemble the unit. Let's have a little gander at the components and the fit and finish. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to install the battery tie-down strap doubling back over itself. All right, grab some alcohol or acetone and let's prep the spot so you get good adhesion on your 3M sticky pad. This VHB pad may look small, but it's no joke. Uh, this is permanent stuff, and if cleaned and applied properly, it will hold the battery on its own without the Velcro strap. Here I'm going to test fit the battery and triple check my placement before I peel the two-sided tape because I want it to be perfect and you only got one shot. Now that the battery is firmly seated, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up my Velcro strap by looping it back on itself and pulling it snug. Okay, I'm going to set this aside for now and I'm going to grab the bridge. Now you'll notice there is a CNC cutout on the side for the charge port, as well as a series of hole patterns for every brand and size graph mount. We'll proceed to cut the male end off of the charge port so we can hardwire it in. You will use four of the supplied machine screws and nylock nuts to fasten the charge port. Out of these four patterns that you see here, there's two for Garmin, one for Hummingbird, and one for Lowrance. The two for Garmin, they're the same pattern over again. It's just one is more forward, 
and one is uh, pushed three quarters of an inch further back so you're able to fit a 10 inch graph on the unit uh, while zipping up into a clown bag okay four holes on the back here which are actually small slots and four more matching small slots on the bottom you'll fill all eight holes For this step, I like to use either needle nose pliers or small channel locks. I find it's easier to hold the nut rather than using a wrench and having the nut keep falling out of the wrench. Just quickly pop this switch into the front panel and even though we haven't wired the shuttle up yet we're gonna put the front panel on and check out what she looks like And left out of your supplied hardware pack, you should only have two machine screws left. For the front panel, they do not require nuts as the shuttle is tapped and the face plate simply screws on with threaded holes. The face plate has small vertical slots for fine adjustment so that it sits absolutely perfect once you close it up. Okay, we're gonna switch over to a fully loaded, already assembled shuttle, so I can show you what it looks like with the GLS-10, the black box mounted on the back. There's two different hole patterns on the back of the shuttle, one for the GLS-10 box for live scope guys, and one for the active target box. I'll remind you guys, yes, it works with live scope, active target, and mega live. Uh, all brands, live sonar as well as all brands flasher can work on the shuttle okay and back to our original shuttle build here i'm going to bust out a live scope ice fishing bundle harness this is the short Y power cord that feeds the graph and the GLS 10 box off of one terminal connection. They also share a fuse holder uh, and there's a couple other connectors that we won't be using today. <laughs> 